Hello, and welcome to the True Crime Lounge. My name is Breezy, and today we are going to be continuing on our mini-series, Designer Crimes. On this five, we are over halfway, which means this episode and the next episode, or the last part of this mini-series, and then we'll move on to hopefully season two of my podcast, which will focus on criminals of the Wild West, and... I, and then on the next mini series it's going to be called I Survived. And in that series, can you guess what we'll talk about? Kid victims who were kidnapped and survived their kidnappers. Now, True Crime Lounge has a merch shop that you can go check out, help a girl out. You can also find me on social media for any case you want me to do as well. Or you can leave a comment below. <laughs> anyway... I know it's been a minute since I've posted anything, but I've been busy with school, work, and moving. That I'm trying to get this, at least this mini series done, because I just finished my first season of my True Crime Lounge podcast. Cause, but then I gotta go back and do my Just a Breezy chat, finish that season up. But your girl is here, and are we ready to be talking about the House of Gucci? Because I'm excited. Well. We're going to take a quick break, and then when I come back, we're going to dive right on into the house. Okay, first off, we're going to be talking about who exactly is Mauricio Gucci and Patric Patricia Gucci Regi Reggiani? I'm going to go ahead and apologize in advance. I am terrible with names, but I tried practicing these names beforehand, so please do not butcher me if I mis mispronounce a name. So, Mauricio was the grandson of the House of Gucci founder, Guccio Gucci, <laughs> while Reggiano was an, Ani was an Italian socialite and daughter of a trucking magnet. They, they met at a party in Milan and was married and got married in 1972 when they both were 24. They have, they have, together they had two daughters, Allegra and Alessandra. For over a decade, the pair seemed to live in a marital bliss while their luxurious lifestyle making them favorites in the Italian press. As one of the original celebrities, Couples, British Vogue reports that when they visited New York City, they were chauffeured around in a car with a license plate, Maurizio. I know I just butchered that, but I have a very bad Italian accent. Um, a combination of their names. They own private islands and properties in various locations across the world, including St. Maurice, Connecticut, and Acapulco, Acapulco. And Reggiani, who... The Guardian says was known to be in elite circles as the Liz Taylor uh, circles as the Liz Taylor of luxury labels. Anyway, and she would go on she would host extravagant themed parties um, attended by the Kennedys, and she felt Maurizio felt free with according to Raggiani, she would say, Maurizio felt free with me. We had fun and we were a team. This is what she told a UK newspaper in 2016. We were a beautiful couple and we lived a beautiful life, of course. But, however, their relationship took a turn for the worst in 1983 when Maurizio's father, actor um, Rodolfo Gucci, died. At the time, Maurizio had a 50% in the stake of the company and became its chairman. Reggiani highly disapproved of her husband's poor business decision, which intent included buying her, buying out his family's board of seats, a reported one hundred and thirty-five million via Baron-based um, investments banking firm, InvestCorp, according to Forbes. Mauricio got crazy, so she as uh, she told the Guardian. So until then, she will go on to say. His chief advisor of all Gu he was the chief advisor of all Gucci matters, but he wanted to be the best, and he stopped listening to me. I was angry with Maurizio about many, 
many things at that time. But, according to all of this, losing a family business, it was stupid. But a failure, it was, I was filled with rage, but there was nothing I could do. After claiming to be going away on a business trip, Mauricio left Reggiani, Reggiani in 1985 as the head of Gucci. He'd go on to lose the company's billions. By 1993, he was forced to sell his shares of the business to InvestCorp for 120 mil. The Guardian reported he also had a new living girlfriend, interior designer Paula Franchi. So, in 1994, Reggiani received a divorce settlement that would net her one million a year a decade after they split. But she was publicly still extremely resentful of her ex. Forrest reported that after time of her uh, of the press, he recently told me, Do you know why our marriage fell? Because you fancied yourself the president. And here is the only and there is only one president. So, how exactly was he killed? Well, March 27, 1995, he was fatally shot three times on the steps of his private office in Milan. This tragedy was deemed as an assassination, and due to Maurizio's high profile, authorities led various theories according to the killer's identity and, mo identity and motives. A clear suspect was Reggiani, who was the vocal about her disdain for her estranged husband and wanting him dead. She would also go on to say in the 2021 documentary, Lady Gucci, I was furious with Mauricio. I, was a rep I went around asking people, even a local grocer, is there any someone who has the courage to murder my husband? And I could, and I can't aim a gun very well. I couldn't even have done it myself. But here's the question: Did she do it? Well, however, but any without any valid evidence, the police were unable to charge anyone. It wasn't until two years later, in January 1997, when the Italian police received an anonymous tip that sparked their investigation to Reggiano. They were soon to be colluded with her friend and sidekick, Pina Aramina, and seemingly agreed to pay Aramina 600 million lire, 365,000 US dollars, in exchange for having Maurizio killed according to Forbes. So, basically, she would get in touch with the acquaintance, Hotel Night Porter, Ivano Salvani. For his help, Savani then brought out the matter of Aurizio Cacali, who found the killer, Benetto Ceroli, in the culprits. In the addition, Reggiani was discovered by authorities when an undercover police officer recorded a call with them, which he posed as a hitman. Threatening Reggiani to pay the rest of the money and she owed to the group. So, January 31st, 1997, all five were arrested, charged with premeditated murder in connection to Maurizio's assassination. But throughout the trial, she was she was called the Black Widow by media. There's also one in the U.S. called Black Widow, but different case. Anyway. So her arrest in connections to her husband's murder set off a media firestorm. Dubbed the Black Widow, the sensational 1998 trial was highlighted by Reggiani's unapologetic and colorful personality. Prosecutors alleged that she was motivated by greed and jealousy and her new, her new partner, Franchi, ex's new partner, Franchi. As for evidence stacked against Lady Gucci, they, there was witnesses that attested to Reggiani. 
attacked her, asking her from around town about the hitman, and a damning one-word entry in her Cartier, Cartier, Cartier diary, the day Mauricio is killed, Paradisios, Greek for paradise. Anyway, Franchi, Franchi will go on the court and say, I don't think Patricia was bother above all that she couldn't call herself a Gucci anymore. However, throughout the trial, she, Reggiani kept denied directly ordering his assassination. Instead, her lawyers insisted that Oromima blackmailed her and framed her for a payout. The Reg, Reggiani contradicted contra contra contradicted herself um, by saying it was worth every lira. Lyra, Lyra. Again, sorry if I'm butchering up. I did try to practice these names beforehand. Sorry, guys, in advance. <laughs> Her lawyers argued that a brain tumor Reggiani underwent surgery for 1992 and appeared to socialize, rendering it incapable of planning a crime. So, they would also go to say, in Pina's eyes, Patricia Reziani Mar Martinelli was a golden cow to be milked for money. Um, so, if she would say on the TV show, Story Maladette, I have to admit, for a time, I truly wanted to get rid of him. I wanted to do it. So, I would go on asking people, asking people to do it, but my attention ended there. A mere session, a mere desire. But what wife has e has never I kill kill that guy? <laughs> Following a five month trial, she she and the rest of her co conspirators were convicted of premeditated murder, and she was sentenced to twenty nine years in prison. So, where is she now? Well, she was placed in Mil Milan's San Vittor prison, where she was allowed one special privilege negotiated by her lawyer. Uh, and when and she would go on and say, I think I'm a very strong person because I survived all these years of captivity. She told the Guardian, I slept a lot, I took care of my plants, I looked after Bambi, my pet ferret, what kind of Italian prison was this? I want to, I'm just curious on that part. Anyway. Um, so in 2011, she had the chance of early release after being offered parole in the condition of finding a job. In her opinion, at the time, the idea was employed by blasphemous. She reported, poorly told her lawyer, I never wanted to work a day in my life. And why do I tend to start now? So by 2014, she agreed to the terms. She was released after 16 years in prison. And she was first seen shopping in one of Milan's most popular streets, donning oversized glasses, toting her pet macaw on her shoulder. I dream of returning to Gucci. I feel like a Gucci. I feel like a Gucci. In fact, the most Gucci of all, she told the Italian press. I have qualifications for years I went after around the world, came from a world of jewels, and it is to the world where I want to return. So, as I understand, understandably, you can imagine Gucci was not receptive to her public ap job application. Instead, she began working as a design consultant for Bizarre, a costume jury firm. However, she remarked to the Guardian in 2014 that she was very unsatisfied with the wardrobe she has now been subject to. That sounds like a very sad problem. Anyway, according at this time, she said that her relationship with her daughter is restrained and that they had cut off her from the fortune they inherited from Maurizio. 
Um, she said, it's Sara referring to a dress that I don't earn enough at this place to buy proper clothes. So, in South recent years, the 72-year-old has given sporadic interviews about the case. But in her most recent one back in March 2021, she told the Italian outlet Anza that she was happy with Lady Gaga casting in the House of Gucci, but she did have one complaint. I'm annoyed by the fact that Lady Gaga is portraying me as an, in the new Ridley Scott film without even having the courtesy of good sense to come and meet me. It's nothing to do with the money because I won't be taking a single cent from the film. It's about common sense and respect. I say that with all of this sympathy and appreciation I have for her. So, did the Gucci family approve the Ridley Scott film? Nope, as you can imagine. Now, taking this into account, the surviving family members or aren't publicly happy about the upcoming about the movie. His second cousin, Patricia Gucci, told the AP that she reached out for Scott's wife, Giannina Fascio, but has not gotten a response. We were truly disappointed, and I speak on behalf of the family, she said. They are stealing the identity of a family to make a profit, to increase uh, the income in Hollywood system. Our family has an identity. Privacy. We can talk about everything, but there is a borderline that cannot be crossed. So, as for superficial complaints, for one, she thinks that Jerry Leto's casting as Polo Gucci is horrible. Horrible. But that is also, my grandfather was a very handsome man like all the Gucci's and very tall and very blue eyes and very elegant. Hey, Jared Leto was cute. I don't care what anyone says. But anyway, he is being played by Al Pacino and who is a very tall and shows him as a short, fat, short with cyborgs. Really ugly, shameful because he didn't resemble him at all. So, what exactly is the House of Gucci? Well, the House of Gucci is a fashion house, basically. And basically, if you can't quite wait for the house, and here's something interesting. The film was adaptive, adapted from the 2000 book by Sarah Gay Forden to the um, the House of Gucci, a sensational story of murder, madness, glamour, and cre creed. Greed. There is also the 2021 documentary featuring interviews with Reggiani, Lady Gucci, and the 1997 fashion victims, The Last of the Gucci's. Now, I have actually looked at their fashion houses, and I wish I could afford just half of it. But I can't. I'm okay with that. But I'm always fascinated about when a film comes to life about a crime that has happened. So, but, yeah. But that is it for today's episode. I will see y'all next time. Please go check out Merch Shop Out. Also, check my social media. Hit that like button and subscribe. And y'all have a great day.